If thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness, and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall truly live. Because he is warned, also thou hast delivered thy soul. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Woo, glory, glory, glory. I tell you, thank God for the word of God. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to start off on page one. Get some even word going. Amen. Amen.
We're going to try something here. I like hymns. I like hymns about the blood. Amen. So we're going to try something here.
Dr. Hartman to who is the chapter over in this house Amen. and giving honor to Elder and his presence and Elder LaGree in her absence. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday, Elder LaGree. Amen. Happy birthday. Amen. Happy birthday. Even though you're not here, we would love to see you a person. Amen. We understand. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And also giving honor to my family, my thanks, brothers and sisters in their respective places. Amen. Amen. As always, I don't have anything to complain about. I just love the Lord today. I'm so thankful for what he's doing in my life. I'm thankful for what he's doing in my family's life. Amen. Amen. I just love you guys so much. I always brag about you guys. Amen. I'm like, you can't come to my church. I ain't on the mic. Amen. Amen. I don't have to pity pinch him and, and remind him of what he did 
to perceive the same thing, the same, the same newness that I've, I've experienced day by day, I'll give it to them. But I know they, that, that ain't the way it goes, you know, so I'm happy to just not chunk it over there. Just, amen. But I'm just happy to tell you, I'm going to keep telling you until you take me home. Then he said, that's enough, I'm going to keep telling you, amen. So we just bless God for everybody in the house. I do give honor to everybody in the house, amen. To Elder, amen. To Sister Jamie, Sister Mary, my Grandma, amen. Brother Mark, Sister Jasmine, the children. I give honor to Elder, amen. Know them that we lay for a long, so I don't have a problem saying happy birthday. Amen. Amen. When you know them that you lay for a long, I don't have a problem with saying happy birthday to you. Amen. 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 And many, many more in Christ. Amen. That's my testimony. I know they said, Who I thought you were going to never share this. <laughs>
Paul told the Roman church in chapter 1 that I am eager to come to you to proclaim the gospel to you. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. So this morning, we're going to look at this next part of Romans that we're going to look at in that context. But the title of the message this morning is actually Genesis Matters. And I know everyone's sitting there now. You're teaching in Romans. How's it, what's that got to do with the book of Genesis? Hang on. You said Genesis Matters. Genesis Matters. See, there's a movement within the church to do away with the Old Testament. And specifically the account of creation as it is written in the book of Genesis. And I have a huge problem with that. Because Genesis, the story of creation, without that, we have no basis for the gospel. That's right, that's right. There is no need for the gospel if Genesis is not true. Amen. So we'll look at that here in a minute. But also, as I've stated every week since we've been doing this, when I'm talking about the church at Rome... We're not talking about the modern Roman church. Amen. Sooner or later, somebody's going to get that. And somebody's going to hear this that needs to hear this message. The church of Rome today is not who we're talking about. Amen. In fact, the, the Roman Catholic Church did not even exist until 325 AD. And it was instituted by Constantine who wanted to still worshiping his pagan ways and add Christianity to it. Uh -huh. so, so he did this. And, and the church does not preach the same gospel we preach. That's right. Preaches a different Jesus, a different salvation that, that works, that's works-based. It has a false priesthood who supposedly can forgive and absolve you of sins. No man can do that. Only Christ can do that. It's a false atonement through the works of religion with no assurance of salvation. And we talked about this for a moment in Sunday school this morning. There is no assurance of salvation in this, in this teaching right. or in this path because you can do all of the works. You can believe everything that they say and, and follow all the papal edicts. And still when you die, hope that you've done enough to make it. All right, yeah. Knowing that, at some, that for some period of time, you are going to have to spend in this place called purgatory and hope that your family can pay your way out of there. Mm -hmm. That is not the gospel. No, Amen? It's not. No, it's not. So this morning, I just want to clarify that, and I will keep clarifying that as long as we're in the book of Romans. If you will, turn in the book of Romans to chapter 5. And I want to show you how we can trust the account of creation in Genesis. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to show you it through a couple of different ways. But we're going to begin looking at what Paul writes to the church here. See, if the world is not created by God, it is without absolute authority, number one. Yeah. Means that man can just do whatever he wants to do and there's no consequences for it. Secondly, if the world was not created by God, then it's a world where salvation is not needed. Because if God didn't create the world, if the creation story in Genesis is not true, then Adam didn't sin. And if Adam didn't sin, then there's no separation from God because the world's not created by God, so we don't need salvation. Again, I have a huge problem with that. Again? <laughs> and we're going to look at why. In Romans chapter 5, beginning in verse 12, 
Now, and I'm reading from the legacy standard, so it should be close enough. It says, therefore, just as through one man, sin entered into the world, and death through sin. And so death spread to all men because all sin. How do we know that? Well, Romans 3, 12, or 12, 3, 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, right. but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Amen. So right off the bat, Paul tells them, Look, sin came through one man. He entered the world, and through sin, death spread to all men because all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses, Amen. even over those who had not sinned in the likeness of the trespass of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the gracious gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to the many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For on the one hand, the judgment arose from one transgression, resulting in condemnation. But on the other hand, the gracious gift arose from many transgressions, resulting in justification. For if by the transgressions of the one, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. So then, as through one transgression, there resulted condemnation to all men. Even so, through one act of righteousness, there resulted justification of life to all men. For as through the one man's disobedience, the many were appointed sinners. Even so, through the obedience of the one, the many will be appointed righteous. So what he's saying here is, sin entered the world through Adam. So if, if, if Adam didn't live, sin didn't enter. That's right. So what we have, and here's the problem. I'm going I'm to lay this out first, and then we'll, we'll look at it. The only reason anyone would reject the idea that God created the world is to not have to answer for the penalty of sin. That's right. That's right. Because there would be no authority for them to have to answer to. Uh -huh. So if I reject this, I can live my life how I want to, and there's no judge. But there's a problem. <laughs> because that ain't so. That's right. That's See, right. Romans 8 tells us, beginning in verse 1, it says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And here's the part that gets, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death, which came through Adam. Amen. Amen. For what the law could not do Weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as an offering for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. Yes, so that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, right. but according to the spirit. See, you got to get out of the flesh. Because God, God's word is spirit, and it's true, and it reveals to us our need for a savior. Man does not want to know that he needs a savior. That's right. 
Man has the idea, I can do it myself. I can save myself, but actually I don't need a Savior because science tells me that, that things just appear. Everything happened out of nothing. And that is ludicrous. It takes more faith to believe that than it does to believe in creation, believe it or not. Yeah. To believe that, that order and, and structure appeared out of nothing. Now, the biblical word, though, says, and God, in the beginning, God. And that's where we're going to look at. Genesis 1.1 says this, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. Key words there. There's four of them. In the beginning, God. That's right. That's right. You have to start at that point. Amen. Now, we look at the New Testament, and in John 1.1, 1, 1, we get another picture of this. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things came into being through Him. And apart from Him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In other words, God was in the beginning. His Son was in the beginning. That active force of the Word of God that made all things as the Father spoke it into being. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Amen. It had order. It had structure from the very beginning. The lineage of Jesus takes us all the way back. If you look in Luke 3, 23, it begins... When he began his ministry, Jesus himself was about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph. And then it goes on down from verse 23 all the way down to verse 38. But at verse 38, it says, The son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Amen. Amen. So even the New Testament, Luke tells us off the bat, God made Adam, and through that line, we come all the way to Jesus. If God didn't create the world, where was Adam? He didn't create Adam if God's creation did not happen. That's right. do, do you see what I'm saying here? Do you see where we're going with this? That's right. The Bible itself gives us proof that the creation story of Genesis is true. Because God's word is true. Do we agree on that? Amen. Amen. God's word is true. And then we look at Genesis 126. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness, so that they will have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that creeps on the earth. And then if you go, you read on down to them, and at verse 31, here we go. And God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. So, do you believe, preacher, that God created the world in seven days? No, he did it in six. Amen. Amen. Seventh day he rested. But he didn't rest like we think rest. That's right. That's right. Because without God, 
God's always working. He holds creation. He holds the universe. He holds everything in his hands. So if God fully rested and just went and laid down somewhere, the whole universe would cease to exist. So get that. So then we look at Genesis 3, 1. And we see where Adam runs into problems. Yeah. Adam runs into problems and it just trickles down. You know that trickle down economics? Well, we got trickle down sin. It trickled down from Adam all the way to you and me. And it's still trickling down. But in Genesis 3, 1, it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field, which Yahweh, or the Lord God, had made. And he said to the woman, Indeed, has God said. That's the first doubt, the first thing. This is all that Satan has. And we talk about this a lot when I'm preaching. Satan has nothing new. His only thing that he still uses against man today is, Has God said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the, the water, his spirit moved across the water because the earth was formless and void. Then he said, let there be light. Well, did God really say that? See, you can go down through the six days of creation and, and say, hear Satan's voice all the time. Did God really say that? Did it really happen that way? That's his only thing that he uses against man. Always has God said. Can you believe what God told you? And my answer is emphatically yes. I believe it. But he goes on, he says, Has God said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, From the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said you shall not eat from it. She should have stopped right there. And she goes, And you shall not touch it lest you die. So Eve lies on God before she made the fruit. She adds to God's word. Yes, she did. And the serpent said to the woman, you surely will not die. Satan contradicts God's word. Uh -huh. First he wants you to doubt God's word. Then he contradicts God's word with something else. Do you see how Satan plays with the minds of man? That's right. That's right. He wants you to doubt, is God's word true? But then when you have God's word, he always has something to contradict God's word yes, that sounds true. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like it might have a have a purpose, might might be reasonable. Because what he tells them is, for God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. So now he says, You you man can be just like God. See, because that's what I wanted to do. And God threw me out of heaven because of it. But you can be just like God. Just listen to what I'm telling you. I, I'm all on your side. Yeah. Remember, we've said that before. That's what the devil wants to do. He tells us, God just don't want you to know what he knows. Yeah. Yeah. But I want you to know everything. So you eat of the fruit. Or you'll be like God. And see, here's something that, that even in the church has caught on today. Because there are some preachers who teach that we are like God. Or that we are gods with the same creative powers. There are preachers that teach that. But that's not so. Again, just it sounds good. It sounds reasonable. And if Satan can get you to think something he says or something that he presents to you, sounds reasonable, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, then the fall is right there. Yes, There's just one step to the fall. And that's what took place here. 
He won't, he won't be like God knowing good and evil. Then the woman saw that the tree was, look, look at how, watch how this progresses. She sees that it's good for food, that it was a delight to the eyes, and that it was desirable to make one wise. Do, do you see the steps there? It looks good. It, it looks like it, it's beautiful to my eyes. The pictures, Satan always makes things look good. Because he paints a picture. And that it's desirable to make one wise. So she took from its fruit and ate, and she gave also to her husband with her. Yeah, yeah. And he ate. God's divine order. God, God has a divine order. He does. Satan seeks to usurp God's divine order. Uh -huh. Adam. The first created, Eve, created as his helpmate, made from man. He, as her husband, is supposed to be her, her authority or her headship. He is supposed to be her protector, the one who keeps her from being deceived. He's right there with her, watching this interchange of conversation. Watches her take the fruit from the tree. Watches her take the bite from it. And then as she reaches out her hand, well, she took it, so I might as well. Satan always seeks to disrupt the divine order set by God. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. See, we, we look at this picture in Genesis, and everyone makes it this little story that's it's nice, yeah. and, and it, it reveals that sin came unto the world like this. But you don't understand what's going on here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's a level of deceit. It makes things look good. Satan always makes things look good. Yeah. Yeah. He always makes things seem pleasurable. He makes things seem as though, oh, if I just had that. Here he is telling them, you can be just like God. And they eat. And the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. Then they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Now here's where we're getting into. Now we see this trickle-down effect with man. Because now man has sinned. Uh -huh. Now he has broken relationship with God. Right. He's separated from him. And he knows that he is in sin because he noticed he was naked. He's covered himself, tried to cover his own sin. But then he hides from God. That's right, that's right. Sinful man always hides from right. God. Amen, amen. His deeds are never done in the light. That's right, that's right. Sin is always done in the dark in the hiding place, in the secret place, in hopes that God will not confront them. So they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Problem is you can't hide from God. That's so true. Because <laughs> God called to the man and said, where are you? He knew where he was. He could have walked over to the bush. Adam was hiding behind him and pulled him out. But he just said, where are you? And Adam's reply, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. I was afraid because I sinned. And in my sin, I tried to cover my own sin. I tried to do it in my own way. 
so that you wouldn't know this. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because, you know, I know you're God, but you would have never noticed that I wasn't naked no more. Mm. It's a mindset of man. Yeah. We sin, and in our naked, we know that in our nakedness, in the sinful way that we are living, in our lawlessness, God sees that, but we try to cover it in our own way. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So, so that God won't notice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Well, I can just do, and especially for those in the church, listen to me, saints. Because saints are the worst. I get in my secret place where nobody else sees me and I do what I do and God don't see it because I'm, I'm covered. You're covered in your own making, your own fig leaves. We try to cover up our own sin or we try to hide from God and, and we come into the sanctuary singing holy, holy, holy and at that same time God's looking at us and we're naked. He sees the nakedness of our sin. Mm -hmm. And it traces all the way back to Genesis 3. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But yet we don't see this. Man fails to realize what he's doing, especially the church. They think they've outsmarted God. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And God's all the time looking at them going, well, who told you you was naked? I didn't tell you. Did you eat of that tree I told you not to eat of? Adam's first response is, that woman, I was doing fine till you made her. But see, when God made her and his eyes saw her, he was like, whoa, man. Yeah. Now we're talking. And then here, he's like, that woman that you gave me, she ate of the fruit, and she gave it to me, and I ate it. God sitting there going, well, that was stupid. Just because she ate didn't mean you had to. So why did Adam eat? Did Adam eat because he figured, well, if she's going to die, I might as well die with her? Probably did. <laughs> Probably. Do we do that with people? We, we, we hang out with the wrong people. Yeah. And we're a child of God. Yeah. And they get into something that they shouldn't be doing. And we're like, well, I'm here. Might as well go along with it. Yeah. 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 And if God were to come down and say, uh, what are you doing? They made me. Yep. 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 Then he turns to the woman and she said, the serpent? Last one in the line, he can't turn to anyone. That's right. But it all boils down to this. His question, has God said I'll continue to preach this because until we understand this, because Satan uses this at every turn, yeah. he uses it with yeah. the church, yeah. inside the church, when people stand in a pulpit and they question, has God said, did God really say this? Did God really mean this? God wasn't, wasn't really saying that when he said this here. And, and people listen and they say, well, it, it feeds my appetite. It feeds my flesh. So I'm going to listen to that because it sounds reasonable. That's right. That's right. And they don't see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this slippery slope yeah. that they get on right. when you start compromising. Uh -huh. See, one compromise leads to another. That's right. Amen. And it just goes down and down. Amen. And we see this here, this picture. But, but then listen to what God tells the serpent. 
in, in verse 14, he said, And Yahweh God, or the Lord God, said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you more than any of the cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you will go, and thus will you eat all your days. Here's a little piece of information for y'all. Snakes, if you ever look at the tail end of a snake, it has legs. They're about that long. Guess where it happened? Right here. And, and then he tells the serpent, he says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise or crush your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the story of Christ. Satan bruised Jesus' heel because he tried to kill him. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And he could not. Because the grave could not hold Jesus. Remember, we said the, the law of sin and death entered through Adam. So when, when Satan tried to kill Jesus, he broke that law because Jesus was sinless. So it broke the law of sin and death because one who had no sin died for those who have sin. That's right, that's right. And then he shall crush or bruise your head when Christ completed his work on the cross. He said these words, it is finished, to tell us time. It is done. John tells us in 1 John, this is why Jesus came, to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. God gave us this right here in Genesis 3. You will, you will bruise his heel, but he's going to crush your head. He's going to bruise your head. He's going to step on you, boy. We see this, and nobody catches this. The, 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 the depth of this, yeah. of this explanation we get here of Adam's fall. And then we go back into the New Testament and we see Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 talking about this. He says, for in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will make, be made alive. The first man, Adam, became a living soul. The last man became a life-giving spirit. That's right. That's right. So if the apostle understood that the creation story is true, uh -huh. and if it's in God's word from Genesis to Revelation, guess what? I can count on the story being true. Amen. It's not a myth. Because even Jesus references this. In Matthew 19, when he's talking about marriage, listen to what he says. And some Pharisees came to Jesus testing him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason at all? And he answered and said, Have you not read? He who created them from the beginning made them male." and female, and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become flesh, one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. What therefore God is joined together, let no man separate. Jesus validates the story in Genesis. Uh -huh. How can he do that? Because he was there, Remember, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And through Him, everything was made. It was made. And without Him, nothing was made. It was made. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So if the one who was there at creation said God created it, God created it. We can trust this narrative. It's true. 
The earth is young, not old. Secondly, uh, Anglican Bishop N.T. Wright, he's no relation to me, say God is the creator God. He doesn't want to say, okay, creation was very good, but I'm scrapping it. He wants to say creation is so good that I'm going to rescue it. Dave Hunt, who's a, who was a Christian apologist, he, he's dead now. He said to reverence the impersonal creation instead of the personal God who creates us, created us, is a perversion designed to escape moral accountability. There it is. The whole reason science wants to tell you that, that God didn't create the world is to escape accountability. Yeah. Yeah. Man loves to escape accountability. Remember Adam, that woman you gave me? Eve, the serpent? He had nobody to turn to. So God created a way. He knew man needed a savior. And he made a way for it before the world was formed. Uh, understand that before the foundation of the world was laid, God knew we would need a Savior. God saw what would take place in the garden. God realized and saw how it was going to move down through the ages. And God created a way prior to the world even being formed for a way for us to be re reconciled unto him. And it came to the fulfillment at just the right time. God's never late. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's always right on time. In Ephesians 1, in verse 3, Paul writes this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him, before the foundation of the world. Yeah, yeah. That we would be holy and blameless before him in love. By predestining us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself. Yeah. According to the good pleasure of his will. What's God's will? To all come to know Him. That all come to repentance and to salvation. That all be reconciled to sonship. Do, do you understand? That's what He says. We were chosen and predestined as to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ. We get our sonship back. Our inheritance is restored to us oh, through God. Christ. Yes, sir. Thank and we were, it was so spoken before the foundation of the world was laid. He saw each one of us. That's my son. That's my daughter. Mm -hmm. I'm calling them. Yes. Yes. I've created them in my image. I, I breathe the breath of life in them. They have a soul that needs to be redeemed. I'm sending my son as a life-giving spirit who through his sacrifice can cover that sin, that nakedness. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And it's through his blood. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our transgressions according to the riches of his grace, which he caused to abound to us in all wisdom and insight making known to us the mystery of his will. Yeah. Through the gospel, we are told his will. The gospel says, for God so loved the world yeah. that he gave his yeah. only begotten yeah. son that anyone who believes yeah. in him yeah. will not yeah. perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Jesus was talking to Nicodemus and telling him these things. And after he says this, he says, for God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Right. He who believes in him is not judged. 
he who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than the light for their deeds were and are evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds be exposed. Adam, where are you? I heard you in the garden. So I hid because I'm naked. Who told you? And he's still calling out to Adam. The sons of Adam, he calls every day, every hour, somewhere around the world. The gospel is being proclaimed and God is crying out, Adam, where are you? Because I'm the only one who can cover your sin. You cannot do it. Those fig leaves you sewed together, they ain't even cute. And they're not going to cover your sin. Only I can provide the covering for your nakedness. He calls out every day, every hour, every moment, somewhere, someone is hearing that plea. Romans, Paul writes this in Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, yes, Christ yes. died for us. Yes. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. And if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Not only this, but also boasting God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Amen. While I was yet a sinner, while I was yet hiding in my nakedness, when I was still trying to cover my own lawlessness, my own rebellion in my own way, trying to do it in my own works. I, I can be good enough. If I can just do enough good in the world, then, then it'll balance out in the end. Come on now. Come on. Come on, yeah. and, and God is saying, no. That's right. That's right. It doesn't work like that. You're still naked. Amen. Your, your Amen. covering of your own sin doesn't work. No. But I have made a way. Because while you're yet naked, while you're yet trying to hide from me in the darkness, while you're still yet not wanting to come to the light for your deeds to be exposed, I sent my son yes, to die. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Thank and he shed his precious blood for you. That through him, by my grace, through your faith in Christ, You can be made whole. Yes, Lord. Yes. You can yes. be justified. You can be washed. Yes. You can be reconciled and be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Sealed until that day when my son returns and calls you to be with him forever. Mm -hmm. What started in the garden, man still plays it out every single day yes, of does. this life. Yes, he does. And God is saying, come out. Stop hiding and come before me that I may cleanse you. Come into the light. Because when you come into the light, when I'm calling you out of darkness into my marvelous light in Christ Jesus, that you can be made whole. You know, we could go back through part of Romans 1.8. We could do that, but we won't. But understand this. In Romans 1.25, it says, For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, 
That started in the garden. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie. They took, they took death over life. Thinking we could be like God. The foolish man. A man still thinks he can be like God. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Man is still trying to alter the divine order of God. And God is just calling, come out. Stop hiding. I love you and I want to cleanse you. I want to wash you and cover your sins. Genesis matters. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Without it, we would not know how we got to the state we're in today. That's right. That's right. But also, we wouldn't know that, that that's not the end of the story. Amen. Amen. Because God's made a way. John says this, he says, little children, let no one deceive you. The one who does righteousness is righteous, yes, just as he is righteous. Yes. The one who does sin is of the devil. Because the devil sins from the beginning. Guess what? Where's that at? Genesis 3. Amen. The Son of God was manifest for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Again, God gave Satan, his judgment in the garden. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, there's going to come a seed of woman that's coming to redeem my people. You're going to bruise his heel. But, but understand this. Before it's over with, he's going to stomp on your head. He's going to bruise your head. He's going to cause you to lose once and for all. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because my way is the only way. Yes, Lord. Yes. I did this. God looks at you today and he's crying out. I, I, I hope someone out there has listened to this today, but listen to what I'm saying. Even if you think you're walking in light and you're trying to hide in the dark, Doing things that you know God would not approve of. That's right. Amen. Amen. You couldn't do it with Jesus sitting right next to you. Yeah. Might, might not ought to be doing it. Amen. Amen. If that place you're thinking about going, if you want to invite Jesus to come in there with you, which, by the way, if you claim to be a child of God, he's with you anyway. He's there. So you can't hide in that booth back in the back corner in the dark. To do all that smooching and he and she because he sees it. But today is the day to hear his voice. You can plug your name in here. Adam, where are you? Whatever your name is, Sue, Jack, John, Bill, where are you? Come out from the hiding and let me cover your sin for Amen. you. Amen. To do what you can't do. That you may be my adopted son. Get back that sonship. I you, I you. All it requires is you to repent and believe. Peter said in Acts 2, he said, as, as he was preaching, and they, they asked him, they said, Brethren, what must we do? Because the gospel cut their heart. He said, repent. Be baptized for the remission of sins in the name of Jesus. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You'll be sealed with that seal. And it'll say, God's son. Child of God. Child of the King. If that's you this morning, all you got to do is repent. 
I, I don't need to tell you how to do it. All you have to do is, if, if all you can do is cry out the name of Jesus, I promise you he'll meet you there and he'll lead you into repentance. That the Holy Spirit will move you and woo you with, with that holy conviction that will pour out repentance from your heart. Amen. Amen. And he will wash you, cleanse you, and seal you. You can rise up and say, I'm a son of the most high God. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for your word. Father, I pray that something we've said today has, has touched someone's heart that just made sense. Father, that, that those who listen would hear you calling out to them. That they would come from the darkness into your life. That they could be set free by the blood of Christ. They would be sealed by your Holy Spirit. Knowing once and for all with complete assurance. Bar none that they are a child of the King. Yes, Lord. And have a place in your kingdom. Fathers, we go from this place today. Help us, Father, to be vessels that you can use to share the gospel with someone this week. Father, open doors of opportunity and reveal them to us to where we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have called us to speak to this person. Father, if, if we have this opportunity, let those who hear the gospel respond to it. Yes, yes. And we would see them made part of the kingdom. And we give you thanks for all of this, Lord Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen.